All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, my name is Jesse and I am your host. And things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, Ossetra, that sort of thing, if that's what you're into, then I invite you to please, right down there, click that uh, subscribe button, become a subscriber to the channel. And then if you don't want to miss anything, click that bell notification so you are notified whenever I do upload new content. Alright, so like I said, it's been a while since I've actually done one of these types of videos where I'm in front of the camera again. Most of the recent content that's come out over the last month or so have been a little bit different style. Um, recording things, audio files, and then putting them on the, uh, the screen with some imagery or whatever. Back into this format here again, um, talking about punishment in heathenry. What does that mean uh, coming from a heathen uh, context, right? Are we as heathens, you know, judged by our deeds and therefore punished for our uh, wrong deeds or wrongdoings or evil deeds and that sort of thing? Kind of riding off of the coattails a bit of one of my last videos about, you know, does sin, the concept of sin, does it exist within heathenry? Heathenry? <laughs> um, check that video out. It'll be annotated up here in the cards and as well as in the end screen. So if you miss it, just wait till the end of the video and click on it there. Um, so, this whole idea, this whole concept of punishment in heathenry, I think is, is, is kind of a nice segue or, or in, in from the last uh, video about sin, right? Because the concept of sin, uh, at least the heathen context, um, is different than the Christian view of it all. Um, but, because we're talking about those things recently, because that's kind of been a subject that's come up on this channel, I wanted to touch upon something else that um, has, has possibly bled over into heathenry uh, from Christian influences, and that's the idea of, of punishment, eternal punishment, or punishment in general for ill deeds or, or wrong deeds or things. So what I'm talking specifically about is, in the mythology, when uh, you hear about uh, the, the dragon Nidog that gnaws at the roots of Yggdrasil, um, at Ragnarok, uh, Nidog is a part of the, you know, the whole Ragnarok thing, of course. And then has a uh, mention of presiding over Nostrand, um, the realm that is in the lore and in the mythology, a part of the realm of Hel, Helheim, that is exclusively set aside for... Um, certain specific people. In, in, in the lore, you're going to hear that uh, Nostrand is a place for uh, oath breakers, kinslayers, uh, adulterers, um, a lot of different things that at the time were considered to be just pretty downright scummy things and, and, and bad things for people to do. Um, and that therefore, when you died, um, if you were that when you died, then you would end up in Helheim, but specifically to be tortured for eternity um, by having Nidog gnaw on your corpse um, in Nostrum. So, you know, I got to thinking, like, that seems like a very, very Christian influence sort of thing, right? The whole idea of this uh, eternal punishment for uh, deeds done during your, during your physical life. So I wanted to talk a bit about that and then the actual perception, the actual understanding of, of punishment and, and, and how punishment is dealt or, or, or how punishment could be, have been dealt from a more like maybe historical side of things. Um, so anyway, this whole concept of the corpses of the dead being gnawed upon and, and tortured for eternity because of past deeds done, um, there's, there's no, I, there's no uh, historical evidence that would back up the fact that the Germanic people, pre-Christian times, had this concept of an eternal place of torture, or an eternal place of uh, punishment for, for, for ill or, or evil deeds. So I think this whole, you know, knee dog, you know, gnawing on the corpses and, and providing this, you know, torture or punishment um, for, for people like that in Nostrum, I think that is entirely, uh, you know, Christian influence. Um, it's all not a part of an arch-heathen world view of things. 
But that brings up the question then, okay, well, what about when people did do wrong things? People did commit deeds that were, for the society, for the time, uh, considered to be evil, right? They, they uh, oath breakers, they said they were going to do something and, and, and didn't follow through with it, or slayers of kin, you know, family uh, who you killed, and then, you know, what was the, what was the uh, ramifications of, of those sorts of actions, right? So I, you know, with my approach to heathenry and what I share out here on the channel, again, is all my approach to heathenry, right? How you heathen is going to be how you do it, but some of what I share here may help you in your approach to heathenry, especially if you're maybe new to heathenry and you're not really quite sure about what to think or where to go with certain things. So I'm not a hardcore reconstructionist heathen but I do lean heavily on the historical sides of things. So I always like to try to find sources and, and things that would back up the concept or the idea of something. And what we see in more of the historical sides of things is this, um, when it comes to, the, con when it comes to the, the perception of good versus evil, right versus wrong, you know, um, righteous deeds versus uh, sinful deeds, that sort of thing. Um, they are, it, it is all built around society, it's all built around what is good for the tribe, what is good for society, and what is not. So as we look at things from that perspective, the perspective of understanding that what is good is what's beneficial and good for a society, good for the tribe, and that what is evil is what is bad, that is going to be a detriment to the society, we got to get a grasp and an understanding of how those checks and balances were, were maintained, right? So punishment, when it comes to a society, there have to be consequences for things that are done wrong. Because if something is done to tip the scales one way or the other, for instance, if a wrong deed is committed, if a, you know, uh, an oath is broken, or there's some other sort of deed that, that tips the scales out of balance, there has to be something that's done, a punishment, a payment, a recompense, if you will, or what is quite often referred to in heathen terms as shield, has to be brought forth, has to be paid, has to be given um, in order for the balance to be restored, <laughs> in order for things to be brought back to, to even, okay? So it's not like if uh, wrong deeds are done that there's going to be some sort of ultimate eternal uh, punishment given or dished out to you for those wrong deeds. However, that wrong deed that's given in that moment, if there is no shield paid, if there is no recompense, if there is no punishment that comes forth to sort of bring things back into balance and it's going to it's going to affect things longer and in the long term. And now we're talking about stuff relating to the metaphysics of heathenry. We're talking things about like a uh, weird um, and the things that end up in the well that, that become orlog for our descendants, right? So deeds that are done that are bad, um, if, if, if those deeds are not uh, paid for, if you haven't paid uh, for those wrong deeds, um, it won't fix anything immediately and it sure won't fix anything in the long term. So those wrong deeds, those evil deeds, those things that turned into becoming something that it was a detriment to the tribe or to the society at that moment, it gets added to the well and it becomes something that later on the descendants of that person will get, are going to have to, to sort of absorb that um, bad luck as, 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 as it were. So the whole idea of punishment to me is not so much to, you know, uh, dish out a sentence that is you know, meant to be something long-term. It's meant to make you pay for the wrongdoings that you've done. There has to be that check and balance that's in place, you know? I can't expect to, you know, steal something from somebody um, just for the sake of stealing, right? And, you know, we're not talking about things that maybe if, if, if there's a, a need for this family and they, and they steal from somebody who has more or greater things or, or, or that have, you know, like they're not going to, everything that there, there's relative things that, that had to happen here, you know, so I'm not talking about like if uh, the poor were to steal from the rich, 
because they're not able to provide well enough for their own, so they have to do something. They have to take some sort of measures into their own hands, um, you know, to, 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 to do well for their own and do well for their, their inner and nearest and dearest. Um, but if I were to just, you know, because I like something that somebody else has, and instead of working hard for it, I go and I steal it, right? Or I, I go to the, the store and I just steal something. That's, that's a foul deed. That is a, that is a deed that will not do well for me and for my inner circles and, and for those that are nearest and dearest to me. It's not going to do well for me to do that. So therefore, when and as I get caught doing it, I'm going to have to pay. I'm going to have to be punished. I'm going to have to be given something to pay back. It's a, you know, and in modern times, that's going to be, you know, probably fines and, and even, you know, jail sentences or prison terms or something, depending on the severity of the crime, you know, and, and that sort of thing. But we all know about modern day laws and, 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 and how your respective local laws and, and regional laws, state, counties, you know, all that kind of stuff, federal laws, how all that works. You know, but I'm talking about, like, it's from a heathen context. There is no... Uh, if I do something now, I'm going to pay for it eternally, in myself eternity, for eternity, right? I'm not going to be gnawed to death over and over again by, by knee dog in, in Nostrand or whatever like that. I think that's a very uh, modern, con considering and respective to, to the whole heathen uh, worldview of things, it's a very modern approach and, and it was probably heavily influenced by uh, Christianity at the time. Um, but punishment definitely had its place in society. There were things that had to be done to make things right. So, looking at that, um, I'm sure everybody who's watching my videos is already familiar with the TV show Vikings and have seen moments of that TV show where a blood eagle was performed, right? There are a few instances throughout the, the, the sagas, um, through, through different sagas, where this method of execution or this method of torture as it were was was done um, but it was done specifically to uh, seek revenge or, 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 or in, incorporate vengeance uh, into something something was done uh, and then therefore that person was blood eagled um, and again there's there's enough uh, information in the sagas uh, about who did what to who and then why the blood eagle was 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 carved or why the blood eagle was done um that's another stuff that's another topic uh maybe for another time but it was a it was a form of punishment it was a form of uh it, it, it was something that was done to seek vengeance and to take that payment of the wrong deed that was done there's also some other uh methods of some pretty brutal torture or, or vengeance uh, actions and things besides the blood eagle there's uh, there's one that uh, hanging meat uh, the meat hang or something like that where basically uh, people would get hung uh, by their heels they would have a blade or something pierce them through the Achilles tendon area and they would be hung upside down by their heels um, there's another one and I can't remember the name of it. I'll annotate it up here on the screen. But uh, it's basically um, you are disemboweled while alive and, and forced to walk around a tree. And your intestines are wrapped around the tree as you walk around. Um, and these were very specific things, very brutal techniques, very brutal tactics to... Get that shield, right? Somebody did something. You killed my father. You killed my brother. You did something so vile and so horrible at the time that that was the payment. That was the punishment. That was the shield that had to be paid. Of course, in modern times, nobody's going around blood, blood eagling people or, or, or hanging people by their heels or making them walk around trees uh, with their entrails being removed uh, and wrapped around a tree. Nobody's doing that. Um, any, you know, anymore or anything like that. But the idea of punishment, how punishment is dealt, how punishment is issued, those sentences, that is all determined and, 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 and put at, at the tribal level, and at the society's level at which your collective exists, you know, tribe, kindred, whatever you call it. Things have to be set in place. Those laws, those, those, those 
thews, those traditions, those customs, all of that stuff are there for a reason. And when those things are violated and when those customs or laws or, or, or traditions and stuff are violated, shield must be paid. Punishment is, is warranted at that time. So it's in context from a heathen perspective. It definitely exists because of the reasons why I stated. You can't expect to have um, all of this, all of things, think, of all these things happening, bad things if they're if they're included in the mix. You can't have expect to have those things happen and then nothing done to fix it or try to bring back into balance. Otherwise, I mean, it all ends up in the well anyway. But if there's no good added to that then it's just gonna to continue to, to, to build up into that murky layer in the well and it's gonna take that much longer for it to, to dissipate and settle down to the bottom because there was no shield paid, there was no recompense, right? So that is my take on this whole punishment in heathenry. Um, talked about, or in the title of this video, you know, talking about going into the bog, bogging, um, was at least at some point used to, um, it was used more for ritual like sacrifices and things like that, but you can see that there were at, at, at one time, especially in Sweden, at uh, Uppsala, the, the human sacrifices that were done, bogging um, was done to, as, as, a form of, as a form of sacrifice. So could that be determined, you know, when we would, uh, or, when, or when those people would uh, sacrifice the, the outlaw types um, the villains, those, those people who had been declared outlaw uh, of society, was that a, considered a form of punishment going into the bog? Bogging somebody uh, is a sacrifice to the gods? Yeah, I think so. Um, there's, there's enough uh, evidence that exists, historically speaking, that could back up what I'm saying. So, you know, how it was done, why it was done, it was done for specific reasons. There's, there was no afterlife of punishment you know what i mean there was no eternal damnation there was no eternal punishment torture uh you know being issued by these agents of entropy these monsters and stuff from mythology that all came in much later on after the christian influences of things became a part of things at least so much as i've been able to determine right now so i'm curious to know what you all think about this and where you see the t the the, the you know punishment existing in heathenry is it up for us to decide punishment amongst our peers amongst our amongst each other amongst those who are a part of our collectives of course it's not up to us to decide you know for you know if, it, if it's me and my tribe and we determine certain things that's our business it's not us to decide what the next tribe or what another group or what another collective is doing that's their business um, but I'm anxious to hear what you all think and what you think the um, application of punishment and how it fits into a, a heathen view in modern times. So head down into the comments below and post your, your ideas and, and your thoughts down there for myself and others to see. You know, hopefully this is uh, give us all something to think about and um, see how it fits in our own uh, respective heathen practices. So thank you all again for your ongoing support. I know these videos have been coming out less frequently um, in different formats and stuff, trying to make things work. Of course, I've also reintroduced a, uh, a podcast on Anchor and, and Spotify and all those other places. So if you like the podcast thing a bit more, it's a little bit different. This platform here is meant to engage and get some, you know, heathen-related discussions and stuff uh, going about specific topics, whereas the, the podcast is pretty much just me um, just rambling and stuff about all kinds of things. So... If that's what you like, check it out as well. All of those details are going to be in the link tree link that you see posted down in the description area. So head down there, check all that out. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this video on YouTube. All that stuff is important with how the channel grows. Um, and all of your support is greatly appreciated as always. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Hail, and I'll see you in the next one.